Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. I think with you focusing on, um, you know, what you need to do in your business to be able to succeed and to be able to focus on what really mattered. I think all of us are there with the squirrel syndrome where we're focusing on different things. And I experienced the same thing in my business. In the beginning, I thought I needed to launch all these products and all these brands. And when I finally got focused in on what was working and what I could improve, suddenly my sales increased. Suddenly, you know, I was doing better with my off Amazon brand management and, and all of that. So, you know, it's like, sometimes you have to take your own advice. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was so good at helping everybody else focus in my consulting business, but I wasn't oh. taking my own advice. You know, I yeah. wasn't sitting down and going, okay, well here, I've helped hundreds of people and I've written hundreds of, of Amazon listings that are on page one, but look at my listings. They're a hot mess, you know, and, uh, <laughs> And then like my PPC, you know, I teach other people PPC and have the PPC masterclass and all that. And yet my PPC, people are always like, Amy, you're going to be embarrassed if you look at my PPC. And I'm like, hey, if I show you mine, you're, you're not going to feel so embarrassed anymore, right? So, I mean, I think it's every single one of us struggles with that, Isaac. Every single one of us feels like, wow, you know, I've got to focus on, um, on what's important in my business in order to grow it. Otherwise it all comes tumbling down because we spin all these plates all at once. You know, we've got them all spinning. And if we don't focus on what's important to us, then, and what's important to our growth, we're just going to, all those plates are going to come crashing down and we might not be able to recover. So I'm so glad that you were able to pivot when you needed to pivot. And I'm glad that you were able to grow and focus and ultimately sell your business. And so what did you do after you sold your business? What, how did you get, you're in bookkeeping now, right? So let's talk about that. What are you doing now and how did you get there? Yeah, it's a weird pivot. And that's what I love most about this entrepreneurial journey is if you would have told me even two years ago that I would own a bookkeeping company, I would have like, that just, what? That's crazy. I I hate bookkeeping. I don't. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Everybody hates bookkeeping. Even the bookkeepers hate it. (laughs) But I love this journey and I love how it evolves. And as you're growing a business, my favorite part is that, you know, I thought that I was just building an e-commerce business. And, you know, in order to do that, I have to get good at customer service and this and that thing and, and, and all of these things. You don't realize you're building these skills and this knowledge that other people don't have. And, and when you see that there's a need and that you can fill it and it's, hey, it's something that I used to do. Um, that's just a really cool feeling. And so for me personally, um, how that led into bookkeeping was in this time of t- trouble <laughs> that I, that I've sort of skipped over, uh, 2018 was a pretty rough year for me. And, um, this was when my business had grown quickly through 2017, but then hit this decline. And I'm, th- I think it's just all these, all, all that attention that I had taken away from it started to show. And the sales started to decline. And when I'm, you know, four years into this journey and I see a business that's starting to decline and, you know, I promised my wife all these things. We moved in with my grandma, remember, uh, so that I could do this and it's falling apart. Like, mm. oh boy, that, those are the call for tough times. And so... It is a long story and I'll try to cut it short, but essentially that's when I, I talked with a coach and shout out to coach uh, John Warren. He's an awesome dude. He's the one who said, well, mate, he's from Australia. So of course he says, mate, so mate, why don't you just sell the store? You know, before it reaches zero, get something from it. (laughs) That's awful to hear, but 
uh, you know, I, I thought, you know what, he's right. Um, and he, the other advice that he told me is he just said, I was expecting him to tell me all these marketing things that I could do. But instead he said, well, what's working for you? You're getting sales, right? I said, yeah. Well, how are those sales coming in? Uh, Google shopping ads. Well, do more of that. <laughs> and he wasn't wrong. Um, and, and I spent some time on the product, uh, the listings and all of that as well. So that those two things combined, massive growth. Um, and, but during all of that, so then I decided, I, I, act, I did make the decision to sell. And so I reached out to Empire Flippers, which is the online broker that I sold through, which a lot of people know. Um, they wanted all four years of my financials. And I was like, whoa, I'm not prepared for this. I had been, I had hired accountants and gosh, that's its own journey. Like people who, uh, if you don't have anything nice to say, I will not say anything at all. But the point is I've been paying them for all these years and I don't believe what they're giving me. It doesn't seem right. And I just don't have any faith in it. And so I thought I can't give them that, you know, this is just, I won't feel good about myself. Um, and so I just went back and I did a super deep dive on my own and like, well, figuring out like exactly what was going on in these numbers. And it took a while, but I did it and I felt confident and like, ah, so that's what happened. Then I looked at that bottom line and you know what? My business was not doing so bad at all. So I was looking at that top line sales number. Uh, the revenue number. Yes, it was declining and kind of in a scary way. But um, the bottom line, it turns out I was becoming more profitable uh, as a percentage. Now, the profit was declining a little bit too, but not in a way that should have thrown me into any sort of panic. Mm. And what I realized at that moment was, holy crap, Isaac, you've been freaking out for six months and feeling just awful about yourself. And you, it was all a lie. Your brain just made this up and told you a lie and you believed it because you didn't have the information. Um, and so when, when, that, when that hit me, it hit me so hard. Like, holy crap. And stress just melted away. I just couldn't believe it. And so after I sold, after I sold the business that it, the sale went through, I have all this time on my hands and I felt like um, I'm only here because of the community. Like they've given me so much. People have helped me along the way. I just like, well, what else am I going to do? Sit on the, I did sit on the couch for a week and that got really boring way fa faster than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I even went out and got some video games and like, this isn't fun anymore. Why did I used to think this was fun? <laughs> but so I decided, um, you know, let me just give back to the community and, and see you know, here, here's, here's an area that I didn't know was so important. It made a big impact, not in the doing of the work, but it, what it means to you as a business owner and what it means to your, your stress level, to um, the decisions that you can make once you have that information. Um, I, just, I just helped people for free and um, showed them what I was doing and showed them how to do it. and it was amazing. We would have these calls, like these video calls, and to see the stress melt off of their faces was just so fulfilling. Like, yeah. wow, it's not just me. And so having talked with then now like dozens of people, um, I, realized, I, I really thought it was just me who didn't understand this, which is a stupid thing to, to think because who are these e-commerce entrepreneurs? They're all like me. They hated their jobs. They wanted to do something else. They're not trained in business and accounting and all of that. 
And so, of course, they don't, they're just like you. They don't understand these things. And so, um, when they, when they got, when I was able to help them, their response was like, Isaac, you've got to, you've got to help more people. And so that's what I've been doing ever since. Um, that was a little over a year ago. Um, I slowly started that bookkeeping business. Um, and, uh, and I also started a podcast where I interview people. You've been on the podcast. Um, so yeah, that's, that's sort of how it evolved. It was a hard left turn, but actually what I'm doing now is so much more fulfilling than shipping a pedicure chair to some person I don't have anything in common with. Yeah. You know, I can totally relate to, I of course have my brands and I love pets and, and my brands are centered around my pets. And I think that that's a beautiful thing. And I, I love that my products solve problems for people and that people really love them. I get a lot of fulfillment out of that, but uh, I think there is no greater fulfillment than helping others and giving back and living your purpose. You know, that's, mm. that has become my why in the beginning, my why was, you know, to, um, to leave a legacy, to make more money, to, you know, I mean, all of the whys that we start out with, you know, when we first, when we're, we're baby business owners, you know, <laughs> um, and, over time it has evolved into because I want to live my purpose because I, we only get this short life, you know, and tomorrow is not promised and how wonderful and fulfilling is it to be able to live our purpose. And so I totally get where you're coming from there. And I love how you took that time to know your own numbers. I can definitely relate to that. I've been at many times in my business where I've been like, okay, I just, I feel like I'm sinking and maybe I'm not making enough money or something's going awry with my profits or something like that. And every time I sit down and run the numbers myself and figure it out, even though I now have a really great bookkeeper, I've been through some, <laughs> some doozies, you know, but, mm -hmm. um, even though, you know, I have a really great bookkeeper now, I still, I'm with you, Isaac. I think it's so important to run your numbers and to know um, what's actually happening. And uh, you don't always have to do that with fancy spreadsheets. You know, you don't always have to know all the formulas. Sometimes it's just some basic math that, you know, you've got to get underneath you because I feel like that is, it's, uh, it helps with your confidence. It helps with your getting a handle on your business. So, you know, the topic of this episode was why your bookkeeping is giving you anxiety. <laughs> and I think that, um, that we've answered that, but why do you think in your, now that you're helping people with bookkeeping, um, why do you think, what do you see as the biggest causes for anxiety with bookkeeping and what kind of things are you seeing and what kind of things are you helping people with? Well, yeah, it's not that your bookkeeping is giving you anxiety. It's that ignoring it is giving your, you the anxiety or not understanding it. And so I think if I think back to when it became apparent that I had the very good problem of needing to do my bookkeeping because I was making money, you know, years ago, and that feeling of like, ah. Uh, <laughs> No, can I just get somebody else to do this for me? The reason I thought I had to do that was because I was going to have to pay taxes. And everybody knows you don't mess with the tax man, right? And bad thing, that's how they got uh, Al Capone was taxes, not because he murdered all those people, it was taxes. So you can't, you, you, that is, we all know you just don't don't go there. And, um, so, but that's what I thought it was for. And I think that's what most people think it's for is so that you can do your taxes. But in reality, now having gone through this, I understand that bookkeeping is not about your taxes. It's not for your taxes. That's not why you do it. 
Um, yes, of course, you're going to have to pay your taxes. And of course, you're going to have to have your run your numbers uh, so that you know how much to pay. Like, there's no getting around that. But that's not its primary purpose. And, but that runs counter to, I think, the way most people think about it. But when you realize that the primary purpose of having your numbers is to help you make good decisions so that you can run, run your business and grow your business and scale, um, then you have a different mindset towards it. Then you realize like, no, this isn't just a pain uh, that I have to deal with. This is actually a very important tool that I can use to make all kinds of decisions. And so what kinds of decisions? I mean, like if you, if you, let's say you have uh, 10 SKUs that you're selling and everybody knows there's an 80, 20 in everything. And so you're going to have two or three SKUs that are going to sell way more than the others. Or I think, um, very often they, there are these SKUs that maybe they don't sell as much in quantity, but they're higher profit than the others. And so they, they deliver while they don't sell as much, they're giving you more profit. And there's a lot of others that maybe sell a bunch, but are less profitable. And if you don't know which ones those are, uh, this is just one example, by the way, if you don't know which ones those are, you know, you're missing out on the, the opportunity to make decisions to focus in on one area what if you could in what if you knew that this product needed some work on the listing optimization and you could squeeze out a couple more sales of those and that would make a big difference to not just your bottom line but to your actual pocket you know of course you would do that if you knew and and then if you knew that there were these others that man after all costs I'm actually losing money on these just marginally, just a little bit, but they're just sucking all the power out of the big ones. You know, cut those things loose uh, and just stop. Don't, don't reorder. Uh, but if you don't know that, you can't make those decisions. I love that. You know, I, my mastermind group of my private label course starts out with knowing your numbers and, um, you know, maximizing your margins and understanding your margins. Um, and then when we go and we do our, our market research and our product research, we run those numbers on potential products so that we can make good decisions on which products to launch based mm -hmm. on the numbers. Because if you have a clear vision of, okay, I could sell realistically this particular product. I know the market, I know the comp competition. I could sell how many of these a month and these are my margins on it based on what I think I can source it at and what I think I can sell it at. And, you know, you put all of that information into a spreadsheet and suddenly you realize, oh, wow, this is, this one is a really good opportunity. And this one, I might be a little bit more in love with it, but it's not, it's not as good of an opportunity. So I love that you're, you're giving that as an example because so many people that are taking this course have been in business for a couple of years or maybe have launched their first products already. And they just, they have these aha moments when they can actually look at the numbers this way and realize, okay, yep, this one I've got to improve the cost on because I'm not going to make any money or this one is really, really good. And this one's really bad. And like you said, cut it loose. I mean, there's no reason we're not in business to have a charity, right? We're in business to make money. So, you know, bookkeeping, Isaac, is one of those things that every single new seller struggles with because they're mm -hmm. afraid to hire a professional, right? Because they're not making any money yet. Right. They're afraid to hire a professional and they kind of think of it as taxes, as you mentioned, like, okay, I'll just hire somebody to do my taxes and they kind of forget about everything else, right? But let's talk about that. I know a lot of the, the courses, the Amazon courses and stuff, they just teach you basically, just make sure you have a 30% profit margin, but then they don't teach you how to actually calculate your expenses and your advertising costs. And so you're actually losing money. I would say 80% of the people I talk to are actually losing money 
or, you know, mm. just barely making anything, right? Um, so in order for them to scale their business, it's going to take them literally years of trying to reorder this product that doesn't have great margins. So for somebody that's just getting started, I mean, I, I teach it up front. I teach people how to run their numbers up front, but somebody who's just getting started, who's afraid to hire a bookkeeper, do you have any practical advice for them? Absolutely. So, I, and I want to add to what you said there about running the numbers before you make decisions to order a product. And I, I didn't mention that I have actually sold on Amazon as well as a pri private labeler, and it was a total failure uh, <laughs> um, it, for reasons we could get into another time. But um, yes, it is important to, uh, to run those numbers and to use them to make your decisions. Now, another thing, and this is why I brought that up, is because I know that in reality, those numbers end up not being what you think they are. And especially now we're like four or five orders in, they've changed quite a bit. And so it's important to revisit those numbers, um, whether that's monthly or quarterly, but to, to do that in a, on a regular uh, time frame so that you don't end up having these product products that you think are profitable but are actually not and you keep having to reorder 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 for what um so yes and so i think for somebody who's starting out uh like you describe i think it's really critical just to do like if they're going through your course and you have these spreadsheets and these uh things to watch out for and and uh expenses calculated there that's a pretty good start like, actually, that's a great start. Um, and so, like, yes, of course, like, you're going to have to know your, your Amazon fees and the, you know, all those different fees and, and all of that and put that into a spreadsheet, right? And so you can actually figure out what your actual profit will be, or at least your best guess. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so for the rest, people want to know, like, well, should I, do I need to hire a bookkeeper? And to start, I say no. No, you don't. And you really shouldn't because you need to have some income first. Uh, I, I, don't, I try not to take on expenses when I don't have income. Um, but so what you can do, and this is the same if you're selling on Amazon, you're drop shipping, you're doing whatever. Um, there are basically what I see as the core and then the add-ons. Um, and so the core, uh, actually that wasn't a good way <laughs> to explain it, but let's just say like you're, you're in a product based business. You need to know those numbers on the product and, and that, that can be its own thing. So for Amazon sellers, it's exactly what we described. It's your, your product, the, what you're going to sell it at, what it costs you to get it to Amazon and then the Amazon fees and anything else that goes in there to give you that number. So yeah, go ahead and go through those. You don't need to be a genius to do that. I'm sure, ask Amy if, if, if you need help with that, um, she's teaching it. Um, and then for the rest, of course, you're gonna need to know, um, oh, you know all the other expenses, right? You, you've got who knows what you're paying for, whether if you're doing many chat or, you know, there's all these other costs of running your business. Did you buy a computer? Did you go out, did you take a, uh, a trip to one of the, well, you're not doing that this year, <laughs> but did you take a trip to one of these Amazon meetups or something? You know, running a business, you, you need to keep track of all of your expenses, all of your incomes and your total profit at the end. And that's not very difficult when you're starting out. You, it's really easy just to, to go onto your bank uh, export a CSV file that you just copy and paste into a spreadsheet and there you go. You can categorize them if you like, which I suggest, but if you just want to bang it out, it'll have all your numbers and you'll, it'll give it to you. So just, you can just keep doing, keep that. And that's a pretty good start. Now there will come a time when you're growing your team and you're doing all these other things. You just like, you get maybe a lot of products and 
you start doing marketing and other channels and this sort of thing when when you this is just taking up way too much time it's like oh my gosh i, I want to focus on growing my business not drowning in all of these numbers um and when you get there you should be profitable by a pretty good margin and then of course you can you can go out and hire a bookkeeper to to take care of that stuff because it's going to end up taking a lot of time away from important things in your business and when you get there yeah get somebody oh. else to do it for you oh my goodness it was such a relief it was such a relief when i was able to hire a full-time bookkeeper it was amazing when i didn't have to do it by myself anymore and i think that's great advice start by doing it yourself before you know when you need to have income before you have those expenses i think that's great advice and then when you get to that point you know, hire a bookkeeper because why, you know, why do you want to keep, we got to, we got to get to some point where we're working on our business and not in our business. Right. And in order to do that, we need to assemble our team. So I think bookkeeping is one of the first things besides the initial, just kind of administrative assistance that we hire to be able to scale. I think um, a bookkeeper is, is one of the first um, hires that most people do when they grow to that point. So I think it's a great advice that you gave everyone to just run your basic numbers, know your numbers, run your expenses, revisit your numbers on a regular basis, um, and just kind of have a handle on that because that's going to help you make better decisions. So, you know, this has been a wonderful talk. I think there's so much that we've learned from your journey, Isaac, that, you know, you don't have to do what everybody else is doing. You can find your own way. You can live your own purpose and, you know, kind of go on your own path. So we love to end our shows. Um, number one with asking, you know, what is something that keeps you motivated? So now you own this bookkeeping company. And then before we go, we're going to let people know how to contact you if they're interested in hiring a bookkeeper. So, but tell us what's keeping you motivated today. Are there any podcasts that you're listening to? Are there books that you're reading? How do you stay motivated day to day to be super productive and, and run your business? Man, I've been, I, since that first came out of your mouth, I've been thinking, what am I going to say to this? And I'll just give, I don't, can I be honest? Yeah. Um, I may be a weirdo and people may not like to hear this, but I am just excited and that's enough for me. Uh, yeah, I, I listen to podcasts like the, I have some favorites that, of course, now that you ask me, I'm blanking on. But I did mention earlier, uh, Think Like a CEO by Gary Keller. That's a great one. Um, but just the motivation. I wrote in my journal at the begin, beginning of this year, I, I used to think when I, when I first when I first made this leap and I made my, I convinced my wife to do this thing with me. Um, I thought that the reason I wanted to do that was so that I could, and I even wrote this in a blog post that so that I can spend as much time as possible with the people I love. And that sounds great and it feels good, but I have learned this year, that's not the total truth. Um, it's not wrong, but really what I, what drives me is I want my life to be an adventure and I want excitement and I want, uh, I want to do exciting things and I'm not an outdoorsman. I'm not a, really a camper. I don't really like getting dirty. Um, I don't see myself hacking through jungles like Indiana Jones, although that sounds exciting, but I get real excitement out of this journey. Like what this journey I told, who knew I would be here doing a podcast with you doing bookkeeping. And so like, it's really to me about, uh, adventure and, and 
now that I'm doing this, I'm not doing e-commerce on my own anymore, although I am willing to be partners with people and advise people. I'm looking for adventure buddies, um, people to go on this adventure with me. And so like that, that I have learned really is the core of, and so 